Hello, hello, and welcome back to Engineering Hack, where we try to solve engineering problems in a way that's hopefully easy to understand. Today, we're looking at a problem in which we have a turbine. It's taking high quality uh, fluid, in this case, steam, and obviously putting it through this expansion process, getting a lower quality fluid at the other side and outputting some work. In this case here, we're given the isentropic efficiency and we need to, weigh, uh, to work our way backwards to be able to find out the information that is required. So problem statement reads, steam enters a steady flow. Oh, this is by the way, problem 7.112. Steam enters a steady flow adiabatic turbine at 500 degrees Celsius and 8 megapascals with mass flow rate of 3 kilograms per second. The steam leaves the turbine at 30 kilopascals. The isentropic efficiency of the turbine is 90%. Neglecting the kinetic energy of the steam, determine the temperature of the turbine exit and the power output of the turbine. Okay, so we want to find out, well, here it is, right, obviously. So we want to find an answer that is in temperature units, Celsius or um, Kelvin, and we want a power which is given in watts. Brilliant. So I've already put the properties of our inlet and our outlet here. This screams superheated, but we're gonna be sure, right? We're gonna to check to be sure. Um, it's also adiabatic, adiabatic, so there's no, let's keep the uh, energies in pink, so there's no heat being in entering or leaving this turbine. Okay, so note that we have this efficiency, right? We have this efficiency, and this is probably the key thing in this problem, which is the isentropic efficiency. We've talked about this, we've introduced this concept in the previous video, so go ahead and check that out if you're not sure what this is. But I'm gonna refresh your memory by saying that isentropic efficiency, also known as second law efficiency, also known as two Roman there, is a relationship bet um, between the output that we actually have divided by the input, or actually, uh, I'm gonna, let me restart that. The output that we have in the real world with the real case scenario over the output we could have on an ideal case in which we don't have any gain or any increase in entropy, right? In the case in which we don't have any entropy being generated. So the way that we calculate this in a turbine anyways, is to think, okay, if this is happening and then going over here, then we're going to have a difference in energy, right? We're going to have uh, first law, everything that we already know, we're going to have a um, energy going in there, it's going to have a certain enthalpy, and it's going to be leaving with a different enthalpy, right? And if it's the ideal case, then this enthalpy is going to be smaller because that means we're going to can go uh, further down the, uh, where's our little graph? Further down the energy energy boost that we can have. So in this case here we have our state one, number one here and we're going to go, our um, fluid is going to lose quality and let's go down all the way to state number two. Okay, If this were a um, ideal case and we're not generating any entropy then we'd be able to go down further and I'm going to go ahead and call this one 2a or actually 2a will do for actual, makes it easier, 2a for actual and 2 um, for s for Isentropic, okay, for entropy. So if I were able to go from number one to number two, note that this gap here in energy, right? So if I'm able to go from number one all the way to number two, I have a bigger energy gap, meaning I can extract more energy from this process, as opposed to this one here, which is a smaller one. So, you know, literally what I'm trying to say is if you compare this one to this one, you have more energy. You have this boost in energy over here from the ideal case. So how do we do this? Well, exactly like we're seeing here. We're going to take the enthalpy of state 1, and we're going to do that uh, minus the, the enthalpy on state 2a. So enthalpy on state 1 minus the enthalpy on state 2a divided by the enthalpy on state 1 minus the enthalpy on state 2s. Okay, And that happens to be 90%. Okay, 90%. 
We know that. So what is our game plan here? Um, our game plan is the following. We're going to use this we, because we have we know this relationship from the start. Okay, we're going to use this because note that the first state is completely defined. We have both temperature and pressure. Be beautiful. So we can grab this guy and this guy. Easy, right? Then the second state, um, the actual one, we don't know enough information just yet, but we do know the entropy of this guy here, right? Because it has to be exactly the same entropy as this guy here. That's the idea of an isentropic process. So if I have the 30 kilopascals, that's a pressure, plus the entropy, that's two thermodynamic properties, enough to define this ideal state. So I can grab that. And once I do, that's going to mean that the only unknown in this equation will be this guy. So I can use this exact equation here to find out what is my um, entropy actual, all right? And once I do find the entropy actual, then note that I'm going to have two properties for this guy. I'm going to have the entropy of this guy, and I'm going to have the pressure of this guy. Two thermodynamic properties means I'm all set to go, and I can find with that any thermodynamic properties, including the temperature at which this is taking place. So I can find the temperature, which is... Um, part A of the problem. And if I have that, the other thing I can do is just do this simple uh, relationship here between these two guys, because we know the power, well, actually, let me just do this real quick, right? We're going to do a little energy balance here on this turbine, and what we're going to notice is that we have enthalpy going in, enthalpy going out, and work going out, right? So if we do a very quick energy balance there, we're going to note that we have H1 minus H2, actual in the case of the actual turbine minus work and that has to be equal to zero so therefore if I want to find out what is the work being outputted that's going to be just the one minus two a which by the way I just found right and if I want power what I can do is simply multiply that by the mass flow rate that we have from the start two which is three I think right so that's the game plan right so we're going to first uh, grab the properties for this guy because we have all, everything we need to know. With that, we can grab the properties for this guy. Then with all those guys, I can find out what's enthalpy 2A. With enthalpy 2A, I can go ahead and find out um, the temperature. And then once I have the temperature, I can go ahead and do this, right? And by the way, the other way I can do this, right, if I wanted to, is with um, the enthalpy 2S, right? Because we know it's just 90%, so we can do, okay, so the work output will be just 1 minus to S, right, times the mass flow rate, obviously, and then 90%, right? Because that's exactly what we know from our relationship that we are using to solve this problem. So, you know, either way, your call, whatever rocks your boat. So let's do this. I'm going to go ahead to the, um, I'm going to look into the pressure. I'm going to look at the pressure table and see whether this guy is bigger or not than my saturated temperature. Like I said, I have strong suspicions that it will be. Where's my pressure table pressure? I need 8,000 kilopascals, 8,000 kilopascals, here it is. And I'm going to note, hey, I am at 500, and the saturation temperature is 300-ish. Okay, so because I'm above 300, I'm actually at 500, that means it's a superheated, right? Superheated. So no good using this table. I can go to the superheated table, look for the 8 megapascals, not here, not here. Here you go, 8 megapascals over here. So I'm going to be interested in this guy here. And on the temperature side of things, I want 500. So this is this is what I'm looking for here. Okay, and now to this, I'm interested in... <clears throat> I'm interested in, in the enthalpy. Obviously, that's going to be my H1, right? But also the entropy. Why? Because I know the entropy on state 2S has to be the same as the entropy on state 1, which is the one we're looking at right now. Right? So in other words, I'm interested in grabbing the 3399.5, and I'm also interested in grabbing the 6.7266. All right. Um, with those numbers, now I can go ahead and look at the 30 kilopascals. So that's my state one, completely defined, right? Now I'm going to go to state 2S, the ideal one. And all I know for that state is the pressure has to be 30 kilopascals. So here I am. On the pressure table, I'm looking at 30. Looking at 30, so I'm looking at this guy here. Okay, and I'm going to look now at the entropy side of things. Entropy, because I know I know my uh, state 2s has an entropy that's equal to entropy on state one, and that is as we just saw 6.7266, right? So I'm going to look here. 
and check whether that number falls between these two guys here or not. And it does, right? It does. It falls right here. So we would have um, a couple of options here. It could be, you know, a saturated liquid if it were exactly this one. It could be a saturated vapor if it were exactly this one. It would be superheated if it was more than this guy here. And it would be a saturated mixture if it's been in between the 0.9 and the 7.7, .7, which it is, right? So now I can be sure. Okay, so 2S, state 2S is a saturated mixture. Right? I can conclude that. Not only that, but I can know the proportion, right? How much is liquid, how much is um, vapor by relating the properties that I do know, right? So it's, if it were, this number would be 100% uh, vapor. If it were, this number would be 0% vapor. So therefore, just by using a proportion, I can calculate the quality saying, okay, if my number, if my actual one is S, I can subtract, yes, liquid, and then divide by the vapor one minus the S liquid, and I can find out what is my quality. And you know, we've done plenty of these problems here in the channel before, you can check them all out here. We have a whole playlist around how to do these things and where these, you know, where this relationship comes from. So if you're not comfortable, you can jump back there and check it out. But for our case here, we are comfortable. So I can go ahead and say 6.72, 6.72, minus the liquid one, 0 0.9, 0 0.9441, divided by the difference. And we know that the difference, we know this difference here actually is this number here, right? So I can go ahead and put that number straight off the bat without having to worry much about doing the subtraction. And three, four, okay? So this guy tells me that the quality of the system is 0.8745. So I'm gonna go ahead and approximate that to 84, 84, 0.75%, okay? Meaning we have way more vapor than we have liquid. And now, note that I can find the enthalpy, which is what I'm looking for here, right? If you recall for that equation that we wanna be able to um, fill in. So if I wanna know this guy, well, I know I have 85%-ish of vapor and 15% um, ish of liquid. So therefore, I just need to take the 84.75%. Multiply that by the enthalpy of the vapor, right? And then do plus the 100% minus the 84.75%. It's a small 100. There you go, a bit bigger. And then multiply that by the enthalpy of the liquid, both of which I can grab right here, right? Where are we? Here, enthalpy kilojoules per kilogram, and I'm going to be interested in grabbing the 289, oops, 289, and the 2624. So actually what I'm going to do is something smart, 2624.6, I'm going to grab these guys here, and I'm going to paste them here. Okay, and then the one for the, put this to the side, let me get rid of these guys. So then this is here, oops, this is here. And now I need to do sum this up. And I get, when I do this, put it down here, the 2S, enthalpy for state 2S is 23, I'm um, sorry, 2268.5. 22, 6, 8.5. Units has to be the same, obviously, so this is kilojoules per kilograms, okay? And now that I have this number, okay, I'm gonna copy this, and now I can go back into the...